Hi, this is Vince Riley, the internet's least busiest music nerd. Okay, it's the 18th of January 2016, and as the late great David Bowie is now cool in his grave, I suggest we review his last CD, Black Star, with a slightly more objective ear. Now, the next day before it, this CD has been universally praised as a landmark in not only his work, but the music industry in general. An unexpected left turn and hugely impressive, said The Guardian. Extraordinary, said The Telegraph. Stunning, said the Rolling Stone magazine. There was much excited talk of him employing a modern jazz band. That his music had never sounded furthest from commercial pop. So, with urgent curiosity, I downloaded the music onto my iPhone and... What did I hear? It was like the death of Diana. Was I really the only person who felt differently about this? My interest in Bowie dates back to buying Life on Mars as a single when I was a wee boy back in 74, which was his My Way But From Mars. In 1977, he teamed up with the ex-Roxy Music keyboard player and assumed inventor of ambient music, Brian Eno, and together they wrote and recorded what's now known as the Berlin Trilogy, a series of three albums, Low, Heroes and Lodger. The sound was decidedly a spin on Krautrock, in other words, Spartan, repetitive, electronic and above all, genuinely experimental and challenging in tone. And it was at this time he starred in Nick Grogue's thinking man sci-fi film, The Man Who Fell to Earth, as an alien with dyed red hair, mismatching eyes, frighteningly pale and skinny. In other words, he played himself. By the time he recorded his next album, Scary Monsters, in 1980, Bowie was decidedly the coolest son of a bitch on the planet, a beacon of light for every arty, bookish, black-clad shoe-starer like myself until one day he lowered his trousers, bent over, spread his cheeks, opened his mouth, and out came, Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. By far his most commercial and mainstream album of his career. I felt confused, hurt, and betrayed, and for the next 35 years, with the odd exceptions of maybe Outside and Earthling, he squeezed out one bland poppy CD after another. Let's face it. Now, you may think that naive, but we had to make a living. But I'm not a fan of musicians because they're Swiss bank accounts. This is not only about music, but identity. This was the lower middle class London boy who looked weird, spoke weird, and wrote weird music. Who wrote music as sophisticated as much contemporary classical, but claimed not to be even able to read music. Also, how do songwriters stay uncompromised in their later years? Well, just ask David Sylvian, Björk, Radiohead, or even older than Bowie himself and his own self-professed idol, Scott Walker. That is uncompromised. I suppose after such consecutive disappointment, the next day looked encouraging and Black Star sounds positively avant-garde, but to compare it to Low or Heroes, Albums that in one stroke beat the path for New Wave and where he had the balls to have B-sides of ambient and minimalist instrumentals. Black Star certainly has its moments. The length alone of the title track, the frequent and overt references to his impending oblivion, the odd slide into atonality and intricate textures on, say, Sue, also on Girl Loves Me, any track that has Where the Fuck Did Monday Go as the chorus line is fine by me. But is there anything here that is really new, even for his recent work? And is it really so sonically or tonally that odd? Thinking of just two tracks from Low, always crashing in the same car and subterraneans, now that's odd. I was genuinely shocked and saddened by his death, really, and relieved that he'd left with more of a bang than a whimper but I feel his true legacy centres on his earlier Berlin trilogy when he was at the height of his powers. I thank you for listening. I welcome any comments. And David Bowie, may he rest in peace.